Welcome back everybody to another episode of Spirit of Justice. We have just finished day one of the trial in the third case and heading into the second day of the trial because now there's another murder. We're gonna just slam this on Maya Faye. Even though she was in the she was in the courtroom the entire time when it, it apparently happened. So let's get to the bottom of this. Ugh. What do I do now? I can't believe Maya and I were actually found guilty. This trial needs not to be need not to be drawn out any longer. The defense has failed to counter the charge filed by the prosecution. In accordance with the law, I invoke the Defense Culpability Act against the defense. Now then, this court finds the accused, Maya Fay. And the defense, Phoenix Wright. Guilty! Fuck us. Ah! Mr. Wright! Albie, I saw the whole trial! What's going to happen to Miss Maya now? I'm worried about that too. But right now... I have one more thing to report, Prosecutor Samahi. Yes. This dagger. It bears fingerprints of Maya Faye on it. Right now, I need to focus on the next trial. The murder of Acolyte Zaylot, right? At least the jury is still out on that one, so, so to speak. The two murders are most likely connected. If I can get to the bottom of Acolyte Zaylot's murder, it might give me the ammunition I need to overturn Maya's guilty verdict. Let me help you investigate! I want to assist you any way I can! I appreciate it, Albie, but we're talking about a murder. Yeah, but it's going to be hard for a foreigner to investigate this on his own. You have a point there. Hmm, I wish I knew what to do. Uh, hello, Rafa. Hmm, isn't that... Your benevolence? Um, Princess Rafa? Huh? Oh, it is you again. The dead lawyer walking, guilty of abetting a murderer under the Defense Culpability Act. Look, I see she hasn't lost any of her charm. Oh, but she still seems upset. Why the long face? I thought you'd be glad I was found guilty under the DC Act. Hm. I am in no mood to, to make to take joy in your suffering. For I was unable to defeat you and had to leave the job to others. I failed in my sacred duty as the royal priestess. I guess that answers my question. Have I misunderstood? The voice of the Minima yet again. This, this cannot be. Such dramatics, <laughs> this girl. All I did was defend my client. Ugh, I can't bear to see her looking so sad like this, though. Your benevolence. Your benevolence! Huh? Oh, barbed head. I thought you had already begun your journey to the Twilight Realm. She comes back fast. I'm not dead yet. I still have an investigation to do. For tomorrow's trial. What's this? Do you mean to say, you have not given up yet? That's right. I mean, what's the point? I mean, he's already condemned. Might as well just go all the way to the end, right? I'm going to approve Maya's innocent tomorrow. But why? Why do you refuse to give up? I cannot phantom such obstancy. Investigate all you want. I care not. You really don't mind? 
But aren't you worried that a lawyer backed into a corner by the DC Act might do something desperate, like forge evidence? What's this? If left unsupervised, I'd be free to do whatever I wanted, you know? Is this, like, Wright's way of trying to cheer her up? Ugh. Okay, now to see if she takes the bait. Yep, it is. <laughs> yes, I see your point. Barbed head. Yes? I know what happened yesterday. You perpetrated some sort of fraud or other misdeed while I was not watching. Huh? Of course. That explains why I misunderstood the voice of the High Priest's soul. Yes, of course. It is the only explanation. Oh my god, this girl. I was just trying to cheer her up. Now she thinks even less of me. <laughs> I must not allow you to sully our sacred hall of justice with your misdeeds ever again. Therefore, today, I will be monitoring your every move once more. I will not fail to spot your misdeeds this time. The moment I see anything out of the ordinary, I will send you straight to prison. And you, boy, do not throw your lot in with this foreign devil. But your benevolence... It's okay, Albie. You don't need to worry about me. I'll be back before you know it. But first, I should probably lighten my load a bit. Albie, would you mind holding on to some evidence for me? Of course not! I'm always glad to help! Unnecessary evidence unloaded onto Albie in his bottomless bag. May the Holy Mother's blessing be upon you! Now then, the scene of the crime is the logical place to start. If I recall correctly, the body was found at the Plaza of Devotion. Let's talk. That boy has grown far too close to you. He will require re-education if he persists in befriending lawyers. Re-education? What exactly does that entail? First, he must meditate upon Lady Kira for 48 hours in a prayer pose. How is that re-education? Sounds more like torture to me. Barbed head, you have not you have an investigation to conduct, do you not? Get on with it! Well, yes, but why does she always have to be like this? What? Would you have preferred that tour guide boy tag along instead? How about they both tag along? How about her and him? Huh? Oh, um. Hmm. It would appear I have read your mind most accurately. That smile of hers is downright scary. All right, all right, Rafa, we're moving. We're moving. Uh, Plaza of Devotion. Looks like the police already finished their investigation. To think someone would be killed here, a place devoted to prayer. A body outline, and... flowers? Did someone leave them here in memory of the deceased? Hmm? And there's something different about the prayer flags today. As the High Priestess Disciple, Acolyte Zealot was utterly devoted to his training. The first High Priest, and now his devoted Disciple. Maya Fey will pay for this! As I keep trying to tell you, Maya has nothing to do with any of this. And you can prove this, how? What do you think I'm doing here? Gathering dirt, dirt and dust for the trial? You and your smart mouth! This is precisely why you and your loyally ilk are so reviled! Hey, Mr. Wright! What up, Emma? We totally need you. Emma! It's that detective from your country again! Oh! It's the princess! You seem displeased that I'm here. Oh, no, no. Don't be silly. Mr. Wright, I'm, uh... I'm so sorry about what happened to Maya. It's not your fault, Emma. You were just doing your job. And if I had just done mine... Mr. Wright... But it's no use crying over spilled milk. Would you mind telling me what you know about the murder? It's do or die in court tomorrow, and I mean that literally. Gladly. I'll help in any way I can. 
Remember, I have my eyes on the both on the both of you, so see to it that you commit no misdeeds. Of course not. <laughs> You're talking to a professional here. <laughs> Her lover bloated cheeks. The incident. Let's see. How about starting with an overview of what happened? Sure. The victim is Perez a lot. He was the high priest's disciple. His body was discovered around noon today, right after the rite wrapped up. So, during the high priest's murder trial. That's right. Apparently, he had been here praying since the day before the rite even started. Talk about serious devotion. Yeah, I barely lasted a few minutes. This is a picture of Mr. Zaylot's body. That dagger is in his upper back looks like it would have been particularly painful. Hmm? Is that a tattoo on the back of his neck? It's peach shaped? Okay. Everyone started leaving when the praying was finally done. But the victim remained bent over in prayer, and when they went over to check on him, they discovered he was dead, right? Damn. I love how no one realizes that because they're so... Religion! That's all. <laughs> yes, the estimated time of death is May 9th, sometime between the start of the riot and the discovery of the high priest's body. In other words, we believe the crime took place during the purification rite. And the murder weapon was the same ceremonial dagger that killed the high priest. The prosecution believes Maya came down the stairs after killing the high priest, and then stabbed Mr. Zaloth with the same dagger. Circumstantial evidence does point to Maya, but... What about the cause of death? He apparently died instantly from the dagger that was left thrust into his upper back. Here's the autopsy report. I love Emma's theme. Estimated time of death, you say? How can you know such a thing? I want to know. Well, Barbhead, out with it. Why don't you just ask Emma? Oh, so the princess of the spirit medium kingdom is interested in forensic science? Hm. I have no interest in science, forensic or otherwise. Nevertheless, I will someday be queen. As such, it would be wise to know what silly things the common folk believe in. There's nothing silly about it. I'll have you know, even Prosecutor Samani holds forensics in high regard. Does he? Hmm, perhaps I should not underestimate the power of science. Still, I suppose it is nothing much of compared to the divination seance. <sighs> she really doesn't have an adorable bone in her body. Emma, I think she's actually interested. Would you mind explaining it to her? I guess I have to now. Okay, there are many ways to estimate the time of death, but the most well-known method uses a change in body temperature. Interesting. Body temperature drops at a steady rate from the moment a person dies. That means we can tell how long someone's been dead by measuring their temperature. Hmm. I see, I see. That is quite enlightening. Barbhead, present your forehead now. What? What? Why? Hmm. You feel just a little over 95 degrees. It seems you are not dead yet. Of course I'm not. <laughs> it was but a jest. After all, you're still the dead lawyer walking. I failed to see the humor in any of this. <laughs> Karine people are vicious. Were there any witnesses? With so many people here on the plaza, you think somebody would have seen something. You think so, wouldn't you? But we haven't found a single witness. How's that even possible? Because everyone was bent over, utterly devoted to prayer, naturally. Oh, right. The back-shattering pose that nearly killed me. Still, you think someone would have noticed something? I thought so too, but... With the monk's scarf he had on, no one could see the dagger on, in his upper back. Plus, everyone was so dis absorbed in prayer, they didn't see or hear anything. I can't believe this. What you chose to believe is your choice, but the fact remains there were no witnesses. However, there is one piece of irrefutable evidence. The dagger. 
Sadly, yes. Ugh. Could you tell me about the murder weapon? The killer used the war bag dagger, the legendary weapon of Lady Kira. It was discovered and paled in the victim's upper back. The accused's fingerprints were found on the dagger, were they not? Y yes, they were. With such irrefutable evidence, there is no questioning the accused's guilt. Not so fast. What about a motive? Maya had no reason to kill Acolyte Zalot. What do the police think about this matter? Maya had no reason to kill Acolyte Zalot. So you say, but let us now hear what the police think about the matter. The police believe Maya is the Lady Kira figure who has been battling the rebels. And since Mr. Zela was the disciple of the High Priest, who turned out to be a rebel, a rebel, rebel, he too was likely a rebel and therefore met the same untimely demise as his teacher. Yes, that is how the police currently view the, this crime. There's no way Maya is that Lady Kira vigilante. I agree on a personal level, but the police are just going with that today's trial, with what today's trial concluded. Yeah. I really blew it in court today. It's okay. We'll be fine. We got this. Let's examine it because there's some new stuff here. This prayer flag looks much newer than the than the rest. Um, your benevolence? What does it say here? The dearest wishes of our subjects are written upon these prayer flags. Reading the prayers of others is considered rude. But if you must know, it says, at the usual spot, bring grub, the key to. What? Huh, this is, this is one of the more direct and practical prayers I have ever seen. I wonder if it's even a prayer. I don't think it is. So these flowers were left here in memory of Acolyte Zalot. What are they called? They are known as Namanda, and they are given to express sorrow when a life is lost. It seems offering flowers in memory of the dead is a universal practice. I don't know if there's anything else I need to examine after this. Acolyte Zayla died bent over in prayer. There's no trace of blood on the ground though. The fact that there's so little bleeding could mean it was a single stab to a vital point. Not that it would have been very difficult considering the position he was in. Acolyte Zalot was killed in a prayer pose. With his head bent over like that, the last thing he saw must have been this rug. It is a prayer rug woven by devout monks. May the Holy Mother's blessing be upon his departed soul. It's strange that there's no bloodstains, though. Was this, a uh, crime committed at a different location? Hmm. Perhaps it was so cold his blood froze. Or perhaps it was a- it was absorbed by his vestment. It is pretty cold. Maybe the blood really didn't just freeze inside his body. Okay. That message on the prayer flag seems a little weird, but... I think I've been- I think I've seen everything there is to see around here. You have not found or heard anything of a particular worth. Are you ready to give up? No, I'm not calling it quits yet. D does it look like you- does it look like you have any hope of winning, Mr. Wright? Emma. I can't really say at this point. All I know is I have to keep investigating. What are you two sneaks up to? I would advise you to get back to work if you are done here, detective. Otherwise, I will report you to Prosecutor Savmahi for der dereliction of, du of duty. I, I- I'm going, I'm going! Well, see you later, Mr. Wright, and good luck! Thanks, Emma.
Much appreciated. I should really pay a visit to everyone and every place connected to this case. <sighs> okay, as as pushy as, as Rafa is, I do enjoy her theme. It's cute. So, so, are you ready to give up, Barb Head? Any more of this and you'll cause Lady Lady in me to suffer more than she already is. I understand what you mean, but I can't give up that easily. After all, I have to defend Maya in court. Stubborn fool. But you have already been found guilty. If you wish to continue floundering about, I suppose now is your last chance. I'll take every chance I can get. What? Have you given up already? Not even close. Still, it does feel like I'm barely treading water over here. Water? Do all the people of your country go for a swim when they are troubled? If so, seek the rivers on the edge of town. There you will find all the water you need. Go ahead, paddle to your heart's content. English idioms go right over her head. She's so cute. This is actually the case where I ended up, like, starting to grow- It's like, she was starting to grow on me in this one, because, man, before this, I was just like, uh, okay, where are we going? Let's go to the high priest's place. Start at the bottom. Hello, I'm sorry to borrow you again, but- Oh, it's you. Barb head! You are not contemplating casting suspicion upon Lady Believe, are you? She lost her beloved husband, and now acolyte Zaylot, who is like a son to her. Of course I'm not. But since she was close to both victims, I wanted to hear what she has to say. Very well. And then there's the fact that Lady Kira didn't attack Miss Inmi. That probably means she isn't a rebel. Is this about poor Pere? Well, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can talk about that right now. But what about Maya? She's innocent. Maya? I heard she was found guilty. First my dear husband, and now Pere. Mrs. Inmi, you don't really believe that Maya is the killer, do you? I... I don't know. But that was the verdict. So what else can I believe? What am I to do? The verdict was already reached in your husband's case, but the truth of the matter is yet to be found. How can you be so sure? Because I believe that Maya is innocent. That is all I have right now. My faith in her. So please, help me understand what happened. So you're... You're defending her based solely on faith even though you'll be punished for abetting the accused. That's right. All right, then. Your faith has moved me. I will tell you what I can. Uh, are you sure about this, Lady Believe? My lovely wife is also a devout follower of Koreanism. As such, she is not one to make light of another's faith. But if I find that you have lied about your faith in Maya Fey's innocence... I shall curse your entire family and all your disciples for the next eight generations. Hey, leave Athena and Paulo out alone, buddy. They did nothing wrong. Alright, let's talk to her. I think we only have time to actually talk to, her, to this one. How did Acolyte Zaylad end up living here as your husband's disciple? About two years ago, while my husband was at a spiritual retreat in the mountains, he came across Pere, collapsed on the ground. That's when he brought him here. You were always one to help those in need, weren't you, dear? And he'd been living- he'd been living here ever since? About two years ago. That's around the same time Maya arrived in Karayan. Yes, he was born in a poor village and had nowhere to call home. My husband felt pity for the boy, so he took him in as his disciple. 
but not only as his disciple, he was like a member of our family too. I see. If this is where Acolyte Zela lived, there might be something I could learn about him lying around here. Okay, I guess I still do have time. So let's start examining around here. Uh, what are we doing? Let me see if I can examine- oh. Was that picture there before? I was gonna examine the picture next to it, but this was new. A photo of the high priest, his wife, Acolyte Zalot, and Maya. Since Maya is in it, it must have been taken the day before the rite. I should ask Mrs. Inmi about it. They look so happy. To think that this would be their final family photo. That no good Maya Faye has some nerve. I mean, here she is posing with the two men who she would kill, soon kill. I beg to differ. I see this photo as proof that she didn't kill them. Hmm. That smile of hers does not fool me. I sense a deep and abiding malice behind it. I'll prove Maya's smile is the real deal. Alright, we'll go back to talking to her now. Wait. Present! Can I ask you about this photo? It was taken during the Feast of Blessings, the day before the rite was held. The Feast of Blessing? Would you mind telling me a little more about it? Okay, this one I will finish then. This photo was taken during the Feast of Blessings. The Feast of Blessings? Yes. It is forbidden to eat during the days of the rite, so the day before it's performed, we enjoyed dishes full of ginghil, ginghil, and her an herb, ginghil, an herb known to strengthen the body and mind. You love the ginghil-based dishes I make, didn't you, dear? Ginghil. I heard you can go three days without sleeping after eating some. Yes, but many foreigners don't care for it because of its strong smell. Our customs say that these dishes can only be eaten the day before the purification rite, and only between noon and 3 p.m. That's pretty specific. Is it because the smell is too strong? A very good guess indeed. It is to ensure the smell is gone by the time Lady Kira is welcomed the next day. Wow, is it really that strong? Come to think of it, that evening before the murder, an overwhelming odor was all over town. It was like a cross between garlic and mint. Ew, that sounds gross. After the Feast of Blessings, Pere went over to the plaza to begin his supplication. I never thought that would be the last time I would see him. What was Maya doing at the time? Shortly after Pere left, she went to the temple to prepare for the rite. I don't know what she did after that. So Acolyte Zela went out to pray the, mor the afternoon before the rite. According to the newspaper. On the day before the rite, the plaza was so cold, the whole place had ice over. Pere always prayed a lot. Gee, I wonder why! Okay, Pfft. Far more than anyone I have ever known. He was a devout young man whose faith was twice as strong as others. I don't know why, but that's kind of intimidating to me. I thought I'd made some progress by now, but I haven't come across any particular insightful information, even here. You seem disappointed. Mrs. Inmi, is there anything else you could tell me? Forgive me, but if I keep thinking about those two any longer... Barbhead! Yes, I understand. 
Thank you for your help. I'm sorry to have trouble you. We have paid a visit to all of the people and places connected with this case. What? No, we haven't. I think it is about time you prepared yourself for the inevitable, don't you? No! Anyway, uh, I think we're heading to the detention after this since I guess Rafa says that's all we needed to do, but whatever. So we'll continue on in the next video. See you guys then.